Okay, in this video we're going to show you how to calibrate some material. And uh, we're going to start off by doing, uh, from the startup menu, we're going to hit a new file. It's going to make a new numeric project. Let's call this uh, test band. Oops. Alright, so it's set there. Make sure you hit a green check mark to make it. I already have one there. We're going to copy over it. Okay, we're going to come up with this main window here. Some things I want to point out about this. When you have a new machine, there comes no material database uh, for many reasons. Uh, really, a material database should be done with the tools you're using. Uh, it has a major effect on the accuracy. So it's very important. That's one of the reasons they don't uh, supply a material database. So at the time of install, you should actually do a test bend of what we're going to be showing you here for most, you know, every material you plan on bending. So let's get started. And first I'm going to show you what it looks like when you do have a calibrated material. So I'm going to start by clicking here and typing in a, a material that I know has been calibrated. I'm going to hit OK, 0.045 for some 18 gauge. And um, when I do that, you'll notice that what popped up over here, this indicates that there's material in the database that uh, has been done prior. And you'll see it makes mention of the tools that it used, the BIU021, OZU810. It's indicating it's steel, it's 0.045 thickness, and the tensile strength. So if that's the case, I would have... Uh, just have to select this and you'll notice here I got a lot of empty fields no tools selected and so on but as soon as I click this boom all those are filled up and as you see I get all green check marks in my area where uh, that need to be you know completed so uh, big time saver uh, if you have this all calibrated but we're here to show you how to calibrate uh, a material so that you can just check on this very quickly all right, now we're going to actually do our calibration. Um, we're going to go again. We're going to start a new numerical project. Okay, we're going to give it another name. Okay, we'll say test two for this case. And accept that. Uh, let's go there. All right, so we're going to start from scratch here. So we'll punch in a new material. Um, let's say, for instance, 058. So I'm going to punch in 0 0.058. We're going to hit OK. And uh, so you can see I put that number in. Nothing came up over here. So it definitely needs to be... We have to create a test band to uh, have the machine figure out how much it needs to go for a penetration depth. So right now we'll just answer all these questions manually. So we're going to tell it it's steel. Okay. That's going to input my uh, tensile strength. So that's good to go. We'll give it a, a width. Uh, so depending what your width of your test bend is going to be, input that. Okay, we're set there. We're going to go ahead and select our tools real fast. And obviously select the tools that you intend on using to bend this material. Um, that's very important. The bigger the V-die, there's a bit of difference uh, when it comes to penetration depth, so very important. Okay, so right now we've got all our basic information set up, but we do need to do a test bend. And since we don't have any material here, we're going to work with these guys. Um, the only real difference between these three is, is if there's a grain direction. So side to side grain direction, front to back grain direction, or, or none, which is mostly this one most of the time. So let's click on that real quick. And then this brings up our test bend window. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to use this to do our test bend. What we'll do is you'll always leave it in auto. And then uh, you, you if you do it manually or if you turn off auto, you will have to set your pinch, uh, uh, your pinch point. Okay. Uh, we'll do that in a separate video. But for the most part, you'll always do it in auto mode so the pinch point is calculated automatically so here's our penetration depth it always comes up with some sort of number um, and over here we get to select which grain direction we're going to use this for the standard steel um, this will come into play later uh, this we do want to put in our material thick or bend length um, 
it doesn't carry over from our earlier entry. That's okay. Just punch it in there and, and do that. So what we want to do is try to figure out what this penetration depth needs to be. So we're going to click on it. Okay, this window, this input window opens up. And uh, if I happen to know my penetration depth, which is going to be the distance from the pinch point down to the final position where you'll achieve your angle. Okay, so it's a simple, simple number to go off of. Um, what you'll do, okay, if you don't know what it is, we're going to use this little guy over here to do a test bend with. So we're going to click on this, okay, and then you'll see this flashing. What that means is that it'll, at this point, you can actually use the uh, little jog wheel underneath the emergency stop. And uh, what you'll do, once you press on the pedal for bending, the ram will come down at slow speed to the pinch point and stop. And from the pinch point down, you would adjust that by using the little adjustable hand wheel below the e-stop. Um, so you'll turn that. Uh, it'll If you turn the wrong direction, it just won't go up. Um, it'll stay at the pinch point. But go the other direction, you'll see the ram will start going down. So what you'll do is you'll eyeball that until you... Um, you know, bring the ram down until you see approximately by eye a 45 or 90 degree bend. And uh, when you're satisfied with what it looks like, you just release the pedal and the ram will come up. And at that point, it'll display the new uh, penetration depth here. And, uh, and if that's all set, you hit OK. And you're going to be back at this window. So what you'll do here now, you'll see your new penetration depth. And then what you'll do is you'll come back over here, measure your actual workpiece, and then you'll enter it in this window. So if you eyeballed 90 degrees, but when you measured it, it measured 85, come in here and type in 85. Basically what that's going to do, it's going to tell the system with this test pen and this penetration depth that it created an 85 degree angle. Okay, so that's your initial test bend, and that'll get you situated and get you really close. So we'll hit the green button to accept it, and we're ready for the next step. All right, so now, since we've uh, done that initial test bend with the and, and determining the proper penetration depth, you'll notice that there's a green check here, green check here. So we're actually ready to move on to the next step. Um, we'll actually, what we're going to do is create an actual bend. We're going to bend another piece. And uh, so we'll keep this program simple. Tools already selected, and we're just going to let the machine think it's got tools all the way across. And we're going to come over here, program our bend. So basically, only thing i got to come do is come over here. Let's tell it 90 degree bend. Okay. Uh, the rest of this is all good. I'm just going to come over here. And let's just tell the X that we've got maybe a, a two inch flange. Okay, so we're set. We're ready to program. I mean, we're ready to run. Let's, uh, let's go to step five. Okay. And here in our run screen, you'll uh, actually act bend your part. You see the first step over here. We're going to go and actually bend this part. Okay. And then you're going to come out, take the part, measure it. Okay, and whatever you measure, we're going to enter it with this tool here. We're going to enter what we what we actually bent. Okay, it may be close, it may not. Whatever it, the case is, when I make this correction, okay, I'm going to say I actually bent 91 degrees. Okay, I hit OK. This message comes up. This is important, and depending if you what which um, access you have available, if you're just the operator, you won't get, be given this option. But what this will allow you to do is add this correction that we just entered into the material database. So what it's going to do is it's going to collect a lot of corrections and uh, improve the performance of the bends as you go along. And uh, what I would do in this case, I would hit yes. I do want that to be saved into the material database. So to really dial in this material, you'll go back and do two more bends. You'll make another program or you can edit this one, add another bend at 120 degrees and another bend at 45 degrees. Do the same thing, do your correction, enter it, enter it into the database and uh, that material will be calibrated. Uh, it is important that if you are 
doing adjustments and adding it to the database, make sure you do it with the correct tooling. Uh, if I calibrate a material and I accidentally pick up a different die with a wider bend or wider V die, I'm going to have issues with my bend angle. And if I try to correct it, it's going to apply it to the wrong tool. So it'll mess up the database. So be very careful when you do this. That should be it. And you'll probably want to do this with all your other materials. And then um, you'll be set. That's it. Thank you. Thank you.